Hello, the river. My name is Marvin Nelson, and I am the pastor at Indiana Alliance Church in Indiana, Pennsylvania. I've been friends with Mark for a pretty long time, but uh, not as long as my wife. She was in his youth group as a high schooler, so that's how old Pastor Mark Helsel is. <laughs> well, anyways, I, I am so glad to be here with you. It's an honor to be invited by Mark to lead you in a Lenten Lunch devotional. So welcome to Lenten Lunch. Today, I get to have a conversation with you about Jesus as he was in the Mount of Olives praying with his disciples. And subsequently, that's where he was found by Judas and the soldiers uh, who then arrested him and took him <clears throat> to beat him. Well, one of the things that you look at, we're, we're looking at Luke 22, starting in verse 39. One of the things that things that really shocks me about this part is Jesus asking his disciples to pray with him. He says very specifically, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he is doing the same thing because then later he asks, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. So Jesus is praying for himself. He's praying for what is going to come. He's praying for the courage and he's praying for the strength to get through it. He asks his disciples to do the same, essentially saying, pray with me. In this moment, I need you. In this moment, I need you to intercede with me, alongside of me. But they don't. Jesus is already emotionally distraught, knowing what's happening, knowing what's going to come. And he asks his friends to be there with him to be there for him, and they don't. They fall asleep. <laughs> and he says, when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. This is the only time that, that we see Jesus asking his disciples to pray with him in this way. It's a passionate plea that he's asking for their participation in prayer. Why is that important for you and for me? Well, it shows us the importance of prayer. Jesus consistently throughout his life prayed. It, he went away to solitary places and prayed. He challenged his disciples later before he was ascending. He said, wait and pray for the promise is coming to you, which we know now is the Holy Spirit. Prayer is a vital piece of discipleship. Even Jesus himself needed to pray. And as we focus on Lent, especially this week, this Holy Week, as we are participating alongside of the disciples and alongside of Jesus in this week, what some could call it a dirge to the cross, a grave walk to the cross, knowing what is going to come. We are participating with him in this. And we spent the last 30 or so days focusing on Jesus and focusing on what is to come. And here is the culmination of it. And Jesus challenges his disciples to pray. Pray for what is to come. Jesus knew the challenge that would come to his disciples. The soldiers were coming. The soldiers were going to arrest Jesus and they would be afraid. In fact, when, when Judas comes to betray Jesus with a kiss, when he brings the soldiers alongside of him, there's this fear and panic that rises up within the disciples. Peter will know later, uh, Luke does not name him uh, in this passage. We know Peter pulls his sword out and hacks off the ear of one of the soldiers. And in that, he's showing his fear, but also pretend courage. It's like, oh, we're going to do this. It's time. But he didn't understand what Jesus was trying to do or all along what Jesus was trying to say. He wasn't listening. And part of that was because he wasn't praying when Jesus asked him to pray. During this holy week, my challenge for all of us is that we will pray. Maybe fast and pray. Maybe for Lent you've already been fasting from something. But prayer is powerful. And we can participate with God in prayer. Jesus challenges us to pray. So during this holy week, may we pray so that we don't fall into temptation or misunderstand what Jesus is trying to do. Another thing in this passage uh, going on from verse 47 in Luke 22, where it explains Jesus being betrayed and Peter hacking off the ear of Malchus. 
When that happens, this is what happens. And one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple and elders who had come against him, have you come against out as, as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. He challenges them even while he's being arrested. He's like, hey, listen, you could have grabbed me at any time. Why are you doing this in darkness of night? He knew that they really didn't have a case and they knew they didn't really have a case. But what really stuck out to me about this particular passage, as it always does, is this. Jesus healed a man miraculously. He picked up the ear off the ground, put it back on Malchus. We'll find out that's the name of the soldier in another gospel. Picked up the ear and put it back on Malchus' head, completely healed. Now, I don't know if, <laughs> if you're like me, but if I'm there in that situation and I'm Malchus, and I'm the other soldiers who watch this happen, and we're arresting Jesus for being a false prophet or someone who is claiming to be someone he's not, I don't want to arrest Jesus anymore. I don't want to take him away. Thinking, look at what he just did. Now, we say that, but you and I both know that when we walk in our life with Jesus, Jesus does some miraculous things. And we still end up walking away or moving out of intimacy with him one way or the other. So my challenge is as we look at this particular portion of Holy Week, where Jesus was, was arrested, where Jesus asked his friends to participate with him in prayer, and they emotionally abandoned him. And then they physically abandoned him shortly after this. We'll see in the Gospel of Mark, they all ran away. One even had his clothes taken off because he was running so fast and so far, he ran away naked. And that's Mark, John Mark himself. But the point is, they were not where they were supposed to be with Jesus. They were not spending the right time with the Lord and participating in prayer. They misunderstood what was happening. And the soldiers, despite the miraculous work that Jesus had done, still arrested him. You and I can be the same. You and I can fall into the same traps. That's not to shame us or guilt us. It's just to state the fact. But I will tell you that when I have participated in prayer with the Lord, when I have earnestly sought his face, when I have sought to be with him as Moses was face to face in the presence of God, inviting God's presence into those moments, inviting the Holy Spirit to speak to me through the scriptures, man, that's, that's when I was really close with Jesus. That's when I understand best what he's trying to do in my life. And that's when I don't want to run away. And that's when I don't want to arrest Jesus, even though he's done miraculous things. Even though I'm supposed to, because of the miracles he's done, I want to stay close to him. So during Holy Week, I challenge you to fast and pray. Spend some time this week praying. Pray like maybe you've never done before. Get alone, find a lonely room where you sit and you invite the presence of God, where it no longer becomes a lonely space because you are there with God and God is there with you. That's my Lenten lunch devotional. Hopefully you're encouraged to do so. God bless you and thank you for letting me speak into your life this week.